Welcome to the We Ain't Normal podcast, where each week we share the best tools to help neurodiverse moms navigate life so you can enjoy more flow, focus, and freedom to live your best life yet. And now, here's your host, Charmaine Fuller. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the final episode of season number one of the We Ain't Normal show cast. This has been an exciting ride. There have been so many ups and downs in the launching of this show, but I am grateful that we have made it to the end of the first season. Yay! So I am wrapping the season up with executing without overwhelm. I want to get to the nitty gritty, but before I get to the nitty gritty, if you don't know who I am yet, I am Charmaine Johnson Fuller. I'm the life strategist with The Charmed Life. I help neurodiverse moms create focus and flow in their life without the overwhelm. And I absolutely love doing it. Do you see my son in the background? It looks like I have something popping off the top of my head. But anywho, um, (laughs) I love how I get to serve. And I am grateful that I've had this opportunity to um, start something that has actually been a heart project for years. And I started off doing summits and I don't hate summits. I'm, I, ugh, they're just not my zhuzh. They are just not my zhuzh at all. Um, but I love the section of it where I got to speak and meet other women that were able to share stories that helped other women. And I wanted to do that again, just not in a, a summit for, format. You know, I wanted it to be always available. And I didn't want people to have to jump through, through hoops to attend, but I still wanted you to meet some really dope ass ladies and to connect with them and to connect with me. And it's just been, again, I am, I'm honored and grateful for those that have listened and for those who will listen coming up in the future, because these episodes will always be here. So my heart is full. I am just so stoked. I'm kind of sad and excited that this is the end of this first season. Um, I just am. And so let's talk about executing without the overwhelm. Now, if you are neurodiverse like me, now let me explain what neurodiverse is. <laughs> neurodiverse. So neurodiverse is those of us that have brains that do not function like a neurotypical person's would. So we're a bit more quirky. We think a bit a lot more actually outside of the box. So we think way outside of the box. In my world, the neurodivergent are the ADHDers, the autism, the, um, oh, dyslexia, people whose brains see things like way differently and we're often considered weird or out of place. We may have different sensory issues either with lighting or clothing or food. We just don't see the world in the exact same way. And oftentimes it leads us to feel like we are effing it up because this world was not necessarily built for the neurodivergent brain, although I believe it was build, built from the neurodivergent brain. Like you had to be weird to create some of this shit, right? So it's for people that that think operate experience the world in a way that is not normally recognized or maybe even accepted and it's more than just a minor little quirk please don't come on here going oh my god i have some adhd symptoms too so everybody has that we hate that shit don't do that if you (laughs) if you are not presenting symptoms I don't know what the percentage is, but more than every once in a while, you know, if it's something that you've been living with, then your people are here. Don't come talking about you forget stuff to we not into all that. So overwhelm for us tends to be, I know for me, overwhelm sometimes can feel like a daily thing. And it often feels like a daily thing when one thing is not present and I could just do this entire (laughs) show on this one thing. And that one thing is clarity. I get it. You think you're clear because you know what to check off next, 
but knowing what to check off next does not necessarily make one clear about one's next moves. And how does one obtain clarity when one has 90 gazillion thoughts in their brain? How do you get those things to end so that you know what to focus on now and what you can move toward next? Clarifying what's going on in your life is the first step. If you like to start from where things are happening now, that's where the bulk of the overwhelm is coming from. If you're just looking at, okay, I got to get groceries tomorrow. I have to do this. I have to do that. That's where some of that daily overwhelm is coming from when you're planning and scheduling your life from this next fire out space versus from how did the fire even start? And I know that can even feel overwhelming. and I know for me, thinking about doing that step is sometimes a huge step because it's not a one day thing. And my brain is telling me if I don't get it solved today, then the world is going to explode. And so I have to often, I don't want to say fight, but that's the only word I can think of. I have to sometimes fight with my brain to go, the world is not going to explode if I don't figure this piece out today. Let me give you a great example in, in regards to clarifying I am working with my brother and my BFF and we are creating like our life script and we are getting some really clear things going on about our life. And in my brain, I'm thinking I should know all of these because this is what I teach. So I should know what I want in all my life areas. I should be super clear This should take me about an hour. How delusional that was. When you sit down from a space and you really get clear about what's going on and what you want your next step to be so you can know how to move forward, that often is not a one hour task, maybe one hour for one life area. That's often not a one hour task. And sometimes in clarifying, I get caught up in how am I supposed to live the rest of my life? Like, and there have been times where I have just frozen while doing things like this because it's like, well, I can't move until everything is perfect. I've learned how to move through that freeze. I don't know what else to call it, guys. Um, I've learned how to move through that freeze by staying present. I can't stop my life to get things perfect. One, two, things will never be perfect. (laughs) And three, even if things were perfect, there would be something that followed it that would mess up the perfection. So I might as well live imperfectly and look at life as this continuous work of art, as something that I'm always working on, not as this destination piece. And this is something I have to remind myself that, you know, I work on something a little bit and then I go, "Mm, no, that's not exactly what I envisioned. Let me go back. And then I get it. I re-clarify it again. The clarity piece is a starting point, but it's also a continuous cycle. You don't get to create a clarity map and never touch it again. And then life is perfect. And then everything is unicorns and rainbows. That's not what happens. What happens is in real life, in real time, and where I feel like for me as a neurodiverse, neurodivergent person, um, my diagnosis is ADHD. But what I feel like the biggest piece of work and my biggest win has been is in the ability to continuously add clarity and not beat myself up. Because I don't know about you, when I was growing up, continuously asking for clarity got me called some pretty effed up names and got me looked at crazy. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily a positive experience for me to want to change and tweak things and to maybe understand things better or to feel like I even had the space to gain an understanding. So doing this now as an adult is like busting up some major BS that I was carrying that wasn't even mine. So let's start with that. But 
getting your brain to know, believe, trust, and understand that this is a process. This is a process. When you create your clarity map, it's not a stagnant thing. Even when I tell my clients when they create their foundational feelings, you'll create your feelings or how you want your life to feel and you'll try something out, especially if you really haven't gotten in touch with those things or gotten in touch with your values before. If you haven't really gotten in touch with those things before and this is your real, your, your real deal holy feel first time doing it, Oh my God, of course, maybe a month later, maybe a week later, you're going, eh, I don't want this. I, I don't want to do this at all. I remember when I first started doing like my values and feelings, I think one of my feelings was absolute because it sounded really dope, right? You know, it meant, it, you know, it means that you're sure that, you know, something's not changing, that you're steady and constant, but it, it means also that you have no flexibility. You don't bend. And it's like, no, I don't want my life to be inflexible and not be able to move and breathe. So I don't want to live absolutely. Like that's not something that I want to do. And I had to go back in and go back into my list of feelings and try something else on. I, I know, I don't think, I don't feel, I know. I know that as women, and especially as neurodivergent women, we do not give ourselves the space and grace to have that conversation with ourselves, to try something on for size. I can't tell you the amount of times that I feel like something, like the analysis paralysis is real. Even with having the piece on clarity, the piece of maybe if I just tweak it a little bit more and then launch it. Maybe if I just do this and then launch it. And then going, oh my God, I didn't do enough. Or even getting overwhelmed in the launch because something didn't work out how <laughs> we planned it. And so now you have to re-clarify the step. You know, as I do this, as I do this more, and even as, you know, those that I work with do it more, you become faster at it where you're not down as long. And so that's what I, that's what I teach and do it use in my life. And that's what I teach my clients is that this is a process. Um, it's not meant for you to be perfect. It's meant for you to gain the awareness to see where those gaps are so that as you're going through a thing, you go, oh yeah, that's where that is. Let me make a note of that. Feel my feels, do whatever I need to do, pivot in it. So the next time this or something like this shows up, I can pivot much sooner. I don't have to sit in the space of, oh my God, the plan didn't go as expected. Let me freak out and then let me hide in my bed for about two or three days because it didn't work out and I don't know what to do next. So <laughs> clarity helps you to do that. And it's not a one-stop thing. That's you know something else that I think in this entire industry of consulting, coaching, mentoring, et cetera, is that there's not enough emphasis putting put on the repetition of a thing. This is repetition. This is not get the framework, do it once, and you're good to go. This is get the framework, attempt one time, see how it works, attempt it again, tweak it, attempt. That is life. Life is a series of repetition and tweaking things to flow how you want them to flow. When you resolve that, when you, when you accept that, when you accept that life is continuously changing and so you're going to have to continuously change, you take some of that pressure off. And just because things are continuously changing, it doesn't mean that you can't have a plan. The plan is just a suggestion to God, the universe of how you want to see things work. But it's also a means for you when you have to pivot. Again, it's really easy to get thrown off. So when you have to pivot to go back and go, this is where I said I wanted to go. And I have used that time and time again in my life where something has happened. It has thrown me off kilter. And then I go, well, what is my focus? What, what is it that I'm working on? What is it that I said that I want? 
and having rituals and routines, which comes up later, I'm going to pop into this a little bit now, but having rituals and routines for yourself that help you to stay afloat. Now, once you clarify things and you know what's going on or you know where you need to pivot and, or, and you know what you want, now it's time to break things down and to simplify them. This means to take out the shit that doesn't matter. We want you to do the right hard things. And that's not always the easiest gig when you have 15 million to-do lists in your head because everything feels fucking urgent and important. It feels like it's on fire. It's got on gasoline draws. It's running down the street. It feels like the most painfully urgent thing that you could ever imagine. I get that. So how do you begin to simplify things so that everything doesn't feel urgent and important and that you don't feel like you're dropping the ball when you're just actually setting boundaries and taking care of your mental and physical health, wealth, and space? How do you keep it from feeling that way? One, determine, and this is what I call my stop like system. I'm going to give you a real quick overview. One, determine what it is that absolutely positively has to be done by you that day. Point the blank, the period. Two, determine what doesn't have to be done by you either that day or at all. It's something yellow. It's something that would be nice to do. Like right now in this holy moment, it's August. I live in Michigan. A yellow light item for me would be looking for winter gloves and mittens in August. Searching up for winter coats in August. Ain't even Halloween yet. <laughs> that would be a yellow light item. A yellow light item would be, for me, would be creating my grocery menus for next week. It, it's Thursday. I'm going to change my mind by the time Sunday comes. Hell, I'm actually going to change my mind by the time I start ordering groceries on Kroger. So me creating that now would just be something that I have made myself to believe is really urgent and important to do right now. Um, and it's not really something that's urgent. It's definitely important because we got to eat, but we ain't out of food. So it's not urgent for me to do. And then the last thing are things that you ain't got to do at all. For example, for me, it's like laundry. I don't have to do the people in my house laundry. I don't have to, you know, I, I don't have to do those things. That's not mine. It is neither urgent or, nor important. What is something that you're doing and it could be researching something on the internet for your business. But right now you're trying to launch your digital product and what you research and has nothing to do with the digital product you're trying to launch. Neither urgent or important. Often things that fall into this third category are things that are not yours to begin with. So like I said, the laundry. I wear, I wash what I wear and what I use. And the people in my home wash what they wear and what they use. I don't wash everybody's stuff. Dishes or something, cleaning the kitchen is something that I have out delegated to my kids. Landscaping is something that we've outsourced. So what are some things that you can begin to outsource or delegate like for real, for real? That is not even yours to begin with. Sometimes you're doing things that are not your things. Where is that showing up at? That's how you begin to simplify your that's how you begin to simplify so that you can begin to act on the clarity. When you have, and this is really, again, squirrel moment. This is great for us. We love getting involved in other people's shit because then we don't have to handle our shit. <laughs> if I'm going to help you to put together your spice rack, then that means I don't have time to build my landing page. Because the dopamine rush and helping you to put together your spice rack is much more interesting than looking at my computer screen and putting together a landing page. So how do you organize your day to work on the things that are 
important to your next steps and that are just maybe even important for you to live your best life right now. How do you organize your day in such a way where you actually follow that plan? Because I know the pain of creating a daily action plan and not following that mofo and like getting online, going on Facebook, and that's all she wrote. Or saying, I'm going to sit down and watch a TV show for five minutes and it's a wrap. How do you organize your day in such a way to where you're not getting hella distracted, where you're not, um, excuse me, where you're not, you know, engaging in things that aren't taking you anywhere and then feeling like crap at the end of the day. So that word is going to be transitions, my friends. I get it. We love the rush. We love the rush. Um, we we love the hyper focusing of the things that really give us that rush. And um, it's really easy to get caught up in that whole cycle of things. But adding space in your day will give you the space that you need to do all the random shit. And what I mean by space is it could be as simple as five minutes here, five minutes there. But having that space is going to give you the grace you need to see where you need to pivot, to see if this is something you even need to be doing. That space will save your sanity. And I, I again, I get it. I get the piece of wanting to pack in as much as possible because there's so many things and so many lists that we have rolling through our heads that putting three to five things. The first time I did that, I, I looked and I was like done. The first time I blocked time and had a list of like five things on it for the day, I about lost my damn mind. Um, do I follow it every day? No, because there are some days where I just, I go for the rush, you know, it's not perfect. <laughs> you go for the best you can do every day, but I do it more now than I ever did because it feels so out of place because our brains are like, feed me, feed me. I need some stuff to do. And so creating a list, a daily action plan that doesn't stress us out and has all this space in it feels so counterintuitive for us. That is crazy but the transitions and that space are needed for our brains we need to have space to you know quiet time whether you want to call it mindfulness meditation quiet time whatever that's a that's a lifesaver for us um having that space to breathe to transition in between activities that's one of the things that I actually talk about in my overwhelm cure workshop that's coming up is we go over and through transitions and how to easily integrate them into your day and into your life in a way that doesn't feel like something else to do. That doesn't feel like you're messing something up and you have messed up the formula, but that feels like it's just easily integrated and allows more flow and freedom in your life so that you can thrive. So those are the three ways to begin to execute your day without overwhelm. I spent a lot of time on clarity. Clarity, oh, clarity is my absolute favorite. Getting clear on what's going on now, what's now, what's next. Point blank the period. To simplify, figure out what's urgent and important, dump all the rest, either outsource delegate it, or put it on the back burner while you're handling the things that actually need to be get that actually need to get done to take you closer to your goal. And third, organize your day with space. Only adding a few items from your major list on there, maybe one to three, one to two if you're just starting out. And then only having about five things on there that need to support your other life areas. I know that feels counterintuitive AF, right? But when you work it, you'll be like, geez, Louise, my brain's not tired. 
I'm not tired. I'm enjoying my life. Things are going great. And these are space things that even work if you have little kids because you're creating it to fit your life. It's not like from nine to 10, you're going to be doing this. From 11 to one is your transition time. You know, it's not this thing. You are, you have the freedom to create a flow that fits your life where it is right now. And then you have the formula to be able to adjust it later to fit where your life is at later. So this is not one of these set in stone deals. This is really something that you custom and tailor make to just fit you. I would love to see you in the Overwhelm Cure workshop. It is an absolute blast at the end of the work. By the end of the workshop, you leave with a really clear plan on how to add transitions to your day, how the blueprint on how you can begin to add that freedom and flow to your day, how you can begin to create a family team and a family that you feel like supports you, how you can begin to feel more empowered in your day and in your life, which is something that I know you want because sometimes it feels like in between your brain and everything else outside of you that you have absolutely no control over what's next. I know how that feels and I want to help you to thrive. So go to rebrand.ly slash Overwhelm Cure 22. Grab your free seat into the Overwhelm Cure workshop. I cannot wait to see you there. This has been fabulous. I have loved every flipping minute of doing this show. I cannot wait to come back for season two. Season two most likely will not be back until the beginning of 2023 because there are just like so many things. <laughs> going on in my life right now. Um, and I think the new year will be a good time to start and kick you off. Until then, you can listen to all of the episodes of this season's show. You can still reach out to the speakers that you heard, the, the interviews. You can still reach out to these ladies and connect with them if you really resonate with them. I look forward to seeing you in my Overwhelm Cure workshop. Remember, I love you. Stay weird. And I'll see you around. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of the We Ain't Normal Showcast. I want to make sure that you stay in the loop, that you get all of the bonuses that go beyond each show, and that you're notified whenever each new show drops. So I want you to sign up for the We Ain't Normal Show newsletter. Go to weaintnormal.show to sign up for that newsletter today. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you can know each time an episode drops. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcasting platform, be sure to add us to your library, download the show, as well as leave reviews. Remember to stay weird and I'll catch you next episode.